You know, there is a man by the name of Sidoam. He and his wife live in a small community in northern Haiti. Just like George Washington Carver, he believed that education is the key to opening the gate of freedom. So against all odds, he decided to load his donkey and take two of his children to the nearest city. It took them 14 hours of walking to get there. Once he arrived in the city, he went and enrolled them in the boarding school. As he completed the process, the principal looked at him and said, Sir, do you have any other kids ready to go to school? He paused for a while and he said, yeah, I have one, but I left him behind. I said, why? I just don't have enough money to put all three of them to school. The principal looked at him and said, you know what? I want you to go back to your village. I want you to bring that third child. As long as he wants to study, you do not have to pay a dime for him. You know what? I'm glad he went back because I was that third child. Then I took advantage of all the opportunities that were given to me. I completed my elementary school, my secondary school, and later in my life, I got the opportunity to go to the States where I was able to get my bachelor's degree and two master's degree. In 1989, I decided to go back to my country of Haiti. But I remember one of my professors who told me something that changed my life. After one of my assignments, he looked at me and said, Caleb, it does not cost anything to dream. So if you are dreaming, dream big. And then I remember one of the things that my dad told me after I completed my secondary education. He reminded me of a familiar passage. And he said, Caleb, to whom much is given, much is required. So I began to dream. I began to dream for my community. I began to dream for my life, and I, I, I began to dream for my country. I remember where I came from, and I remember how tough it is to have education. Now, you have to understand, Pion is a small community. If you, in my days, the only opportunity that you had is to complete sixth grade. If you are lucky enough, your parents will take you to the city, and there you continue with your education. So I think of those days of some of my friends that grew up with me who were even smarter than I was. And I said, what can I do to make a difference in that community? So I started dreaming, just like my teacher told me. I dream of a school where I would bring young people where they would be able to get the best education possible and they would be able to go into their community, into their country, and compete with everyone. I pray. I committed my, my dream to God. He answered my prayer. 1993, I opened the first secondary school in my community with 65 students. Now, you have to understand it is such a difficult community that in order for me to find teachers, I had to purchase six motorcycles, and every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, I would be sending drivers as far as 30 miles away to pick up teachers and to send them back home. We work hard. By 1998, we have our first graduating class. 
And I'm happy to tell you today that we have a school of 1,180 students. Over the past 25 years, we've seen more than 700 young people graduating. And they are all over the world making a difference. And sometimes people ask me, how do you explain success in what you do? And the only way I can tell them, I think of Gérald. Gérald came to me as a young student. He was smart. As a matter of fact, we have a policy in our school. If you excel, you automatically have a scholarship. We provide a scholarship to Gérald. At the end of secondary school, we sign a contract with him. We send him to university. Today, Gérald is the academic dean of our school. I think of Cyclone. Cyclone came to us, and every morning at 10 o'clock, you can expect him in the principal's office. He always said, I have a heart problem. <laughs> when when we, you wonder what a heart problem, it was because he was hungry. You have to understand, he walked two hours every morning to come to school. So by 10 o'clock, when you have a 13, a 14 year old, He's hungry, he cannot stand the pressure of studying and sitting in a classroom. We went a step further. We took T. Claude. We brought him into our home. Today, he's an accountant. I think of Sano. I do camp for kids during the summer. And every day, Sano would come in front of the gate being curious and trying to see what's going on. Now, because of my profession as a pastor, he decided that he would become a Christian. His dad kicked him out. He was only 11 because his dad was a witch doctor. We took Sano home. He went to school. He graduated. He's a talented musician. He played the guitar, the keyboard, the organ, saxophone. And then we find a scholarship to send him to a university in the US. Today, Sano works for Northwestern University. You know, you cannot change the whole world. You cannot change your whole country but you can change one life at a time, one family at a time, one community at a time. And then I remember the statement by Mother Teresa. She said, we cannot do everything, but if each and everyone does something, no matter how small it may be, a great deal will be accomplished. You know, my dream didn't stop there because I, I, I see life in a holistic way. I, I don't just want to provide school because once you provide school for a community, there are other needs that are going to arise. Infrastructure. Because I live in a community where there is no running water, there is no electricity, there is no nothing. So if you really want to make an impact, you have to think holistically of what you can do. So I start dreaming, just like my teacher said. I dream of providing electricity to my country, to my community. And one day I saw an ad in the paper in the Palm Beach Post, and it's a generator for sale. I jump at it. I, I send it my bid. I offered one dollar. Two weeks later, they accepted my bill. <laughs> it cost me one dollar, but I paid 5,000 to ship it to Haiti. <laughs> later on, within two years, we built 27 kilometers of line for our community. I dream of a restaurant. People don't have a place to go to eat. They don't have to, a place where they can meet as a family. 
I dream of it. It became a reality. April 2017, we built 140 seat restaurant serving our community. I dream of a camp where I wanted to bring young people so they can have fun and enjoy themselves. Today, we have a camp with 250 beds. We have 30 acres of land, and people use it for training of all kinds. I dream of a radio station. It became a reality. I dream of a gas station. You know what? Next month, I will have the grand opening of a gas station in my community. You see, it does not cost anything to dream. So if you are dreaming, all you have to do is dream big. You see, you cannot choose where you're born. But you can choose what impact you want to have in others' lives. You have to understand my father didn't have education. He only completed a sixth grade level. And my mother only had a third grade level of education. They have nine children. And my dad proudly tells you, I don't only have nine children, I have 41 great grandchildren and five great great grandchildren. But you know, that man, true education has transformed his community. A sixth grade level man has founded 30 elementary schools. Now, sometimes you wonder, how is it possible? Whatever you set your mind to do, you can accomplish it. You know, I remember when I first went to the States, I became addicted to one aspect of the American culture. Guess what? Television. I love watching TV, but what I enjoy the most is watching the commercials. They're stupid. <laughs> the first time, the first time I got to the States and I was watching my first commercial, I, 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 I watched the television screen and I looked and I saw two old women standing in front of the, of the counter and say, where is the beef? <laughs> you remember that? I mean, Geico has so many stupid commercials, and I don't know, I don't know why they do it. When I first went to the States, I thought that every single dog in America drinks beer. <laughs> and the reason is because I saw a commercial by Budweiser, and you see a big dog just went like that. <laughs> so I really thought for the first time that Dogs drink beer. Now, I'm sorry, I know I'm in a British colony, but I have to tell you, my favorite commercial is one that is put out at the US military. You see a group of good-looking young men standing in front of the screen. They look strong, they are good looking. Every single woman wants to grab one of them if they could. They don't say a word. And at the end of the commercial, all that you see is we are looking for a few good men. The Army, the Navy the Air Force, the Marines. Now, I have to tell you that everywhere those few good men go, they go and make a difference, and they represent their country, and they fight for freedom. I'm here today to tell you that we are looking for a few good men and women that can stand up 
and make a difference in the world. You you see, you don't have to start with 20. You don't have to start with 50. You don't have to start with 100. You just have to start with one. You have to look for one child that needs your help, that mom and dad don't even know how to read. But you can go and try to tutor them and help them with homework. You have to look for that single mom who who is desperate, who needs some help, and a kid needs a brother or a dad that you can go and help. You need to look for that group of children if you don't go and help them, their life will be destroyed. You know, education is the greatest gift that you can offer to our generation because it stays with them for life. I'm glad that principal decided to tell my daddy, go get that left behind child. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. And I'm grateful for a mother who, with a third grade level of education, made me look real stupid. Every day, I have to bring my lesson. I have to recite it in front of her. Whether it was English, Latin, Spanish, French. And I did realize that my mom did not have a clue of what I was saying (laughs) until I was 16. But she was committed to making her children succeed. Oh, yes. You can't change the course of history tomorrow because you don't know if you're going to see tomorrow. You can't change the course of history yesterday because yesterday is gone. But now, now is the time. Look what you can do to impact a life. Look what you can do to save a child. Look what you can do to transform your community. Don't wait tomorrow. The time is now.